1922. Ten years after the Titanic sank, a Scotsman called John Derby was born. At age 15, he joined the Navy and was on course to serve his country in World War II. John is one of the last of his generation to go into detail about how things were at the time, so this for me is a special contribution of documenting his past. Right, now, you grew up in what, quite a, a tough area. Of, in Dundee, in Dundee, it's quite a, a, Dundee a, was really a tough little town mm. uh, on the east coast of Scotland. Yeah, there was two streets. There was one street called John Street, and I lived in Little John Street. Mm -hmm. John Street, you used to get the razor gangs. Right. So can you just tell us a and bit no about one, razor gangs? Yeah, no one used to walk down there at night because they get attacked. Mm. And it wasn't a game of a case of a punch up. It was razors. Yeah. Yeah. So would they attack anybody, or would they They'd attack, attack rival anyone. gangs? The parents, our mother and father, my mother and father persisted in telling me, don't go down John Street, go down Cochrane Street into the main road, which I used to do. Even when I went to school as a boy, I used to walk down the, into the main road, I'd never go down Cochrane, uh, right. down John Street. Right. And they used to have clashes, gang clashes at night, right. with people in John Street and Little John Street. Yeah. Now, I believe your boat was actually sunk during the war. Yes, we were. Sunk by German yes, stokers. Yes, we were sunk by German stokers. Um, we were just got, we were coming back off patrol and we were making for this island. There was a big bay and overhanging rocks, which we were making for. It was quite a distance away. Mm. But uh, what the idea was to get underneath the rock, if it was shallow and if it was good and deep enough, Put a foot, uh, put a bow anchor out and a stern anchor out, and then two of the couple of the crew would climb up on the rock and drop the camera face right. over the so ship. So you you do this every night to we sort of this park up for the night, most basically. Of the islands, where we, all the boats had camera flats nets on the board right. because it was a must. Yeah. It was yeah. the same colour as the greenery around you, right. and you had to use them. Yeah. If you didn't use them, you were asking for trouble yeah. because you never knew. What was going right. to come in anyway? Yeah. We just were making for this when we heard this noise, aircraft, and all of a sudden whining sound, and we got bombed. Mm. The bombs hit underneath the boat, but not enough to blow the boat enough to blow the boat up and sink it. Right. So it actually turned the boat over, turned, did it? Well, it turned the boat over. We weren't going at a very fast speed. We couldn't do anything. We couldn't even go to action stations. They were on us too quick. Yeah, yeah. And uh, if we could have gone to action stations, then if we had known we were coming, but the crew were getting ready to enter harbour. Mm. So you were totally they, unprepared they, for they that. Were, they were unprepared. Yeah. I mean, there was no one on the guns for a start. So you suddenly found yeah. yourself in the in the water. And, so, and I got blew off, blew off the ship and blew into the water. And fortunately, when we looked around, there was four of us swimming for shore. There was so nothing else we yeah. could do for any other member of no, the crew. No, you never saw the rest of the crew. I never saw any member of the crew. No. After. Do you still get flashbacks? Do you still dream at all about not those now. days? Or Not now. Uh, I did for a long time afterwards. I used to wake up in the night jumping up and now it used to pull me down. I used to wake up through the night, terrified he was. I used to have to hold him down mm. because all the war was passing through his mind. It was terrible mm. and it took him a long time to get back into civilian life. I used to call out different names. Yeah. yeah. Those are mine. Yeah. I suppose you could sort of still see the faces of a lot of your mates. I never forget. You, you faces. lost, yeah. Never yeah. forget their faces. Yeah. So being in such a confined space, you know, 12 men together all the time, 24 hours a day, did you ever get on each other's nerves? Did you ever argue? Were any Sometimes fights ever break out or anything? You couldn't or? afford to get in arguments because it affected everyone. If uh, that was my job to stop it, mm. which I did do. If you got an argument, you used to try and smooth it over the best you can. Mm. That's what you meant. If you, some 
people, some coxswains just didn't bother, and that, they used to have a very unruly crew. Mm. I had a brilliant crew. Yeah. And they used to do, I never used to tell them what to do. They were all trained men. Mm. I knew each one of their jobs. Yeah, yeah. And they knew, they knew mine. Yeah. We had to, every man on the torpedo boat had to know one another's job in case they got killed. Right, and they could take over that other and person's they could take job. Over. But my job was in action stations was on the bridge with the skipper. That was my first, and also entering and leaving harbour. When we used to leave harbour, this you know, going to harbour, the skipper used to say, "All right, coxswain, take him in." Mm. And he never used to say anymore. He used to take the boat right alongside, and that was it. Yeah. We saw these girls on the other side of the road, and we whistled them. Mm-hmm. And they looked over, but they didn't ignore us. So we went over. Right. And uh, I tagged alongside Nelly and tried to put my hand yeah. there. He spoke to me and I thought, oh, what language are you? He was Scottish. And uh, um, I did love his voice. I said, oh, I said, where are you from? He said, I'm from Bunny Dundee. Oh, I said, you do talk nice. <laughs> and I think I must have fallen for that. And I asked to take her home, she said, no, not tonight. I said, no, not this time. I said, when can I meet you again then? I said, all right. I said, we, I'll meet you here at the top of Lock Gardens. The night we made an appointment for another night, a date for another night, and I saw her at the bottom of Lock Gardens. And from there we went, we went out. I just kept in touch with him all through the war until that time. There's obviously a lot of bad memories about about the war, but um, can you tell me perhaps one of your your best memories? Oh, of when during the war, war ended, obviously. But uh, we were up and uh, we just coming off. Well, we hadn't we were out of it at all, and uh, all of a sudden we had the announcement. The war was that, is now ended. That come over the radio, yeah. yeah. Over the radio through the telegraphist, you know, uh -huh. and uh, we uh, obviously we were making we were off Genoa, and the west coast of Italy or the north northern coast of Italy. And obviously we went back to our own base, which is at Leghorn, mm -hmm. where we operated from. Right. We used to operate from there from with uh, an American MTB flotilla. Right. And the senior officer on board there, the commanding officer on board there, the one in charge of the, there were four boats in the flotilla, was Douglas Fairbanks Jr. That's the Hollywood actor. That's, yes, of yeah. course, yeah. But he was a very nice bloke. And every time he used to see us in harbour, uh, he used to come on board, Coxon, can I come on board? And he used to come on board regular, mm. no matter what time of the day or night. Right, right. He, if we were in harbour, he was on board, yeah. chatting down in the mess deck, or down in our mess deck, yeah. and drinking our rum. So what's it like having a Hollywood star on your boat then? Very nice, yeah. he was a nice bloke. He, he'd help out on board. He, he'd he'd really? go in the kitchen, into the galley, and, and uh, he'd wash up anything he'd done. He, he was quite natural. You know, he was a very nice person. So the only thing you got then was your suit when you left the Navy. That's right. Yeah. You got, you got a, a demob suit. I went to, to go walking for a suit. It was a demob centre. They gave me a suit and they gave me a trilby yeah, right. a hat, which I never wore. Right. I've never worn a hat in my life, right. except for a sailor's hat. Yeah. That was it. Two thousand and eight, and John continues to live with his wife Nelly. My granddad is a true war hero, and if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here to this day. Thanks, granddad. Ever see a blind man cross the road, trying to make the other side? Ever see younger growing old? Trying to make herself a bride